Hi everyone. It's Alfred. Welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. Um, I'm looking right now. There's only 210 people logged in, so let's get those up. Reset just happened, so I've got a whole bunch of adventures. Uh, that said, just to make sure, I am going to eat a bunch of my bagels. I just keep going. Yeah, all right. There you go. Whole bunch of adventures. And hey, you know what? Just a bottle of vodka. Whatever this is. Put the popsicle in the calibration to show it to be ornamental and then drink it. And you know what? Martini. We got some chutzpah. We got a tattoo. Nice. Cool. Um, so yeah, we got 180 adventures just to go run around. Um, let's go bilk that ghost at pool. That's what I want to do. Yeah, let's, let's bilk the ghost at pool and then we'll go finally, finally talk to the gang of loathing. Damn, he got me. Cool, nice. You're fighting a chalk dust wraith. Won't you, Case? Nice. Damn, these guys are tough. Damn. Oh, right, yeah. I, dude, I, f dude, I completely forgot that, uh, they <laughs> didn't take normal damage from normal weapons. So you have any questions? Um, I'll go pop some skills. Hibernate. That's probably good. And then, um, next, I will just keep my skill high. And I'll use some hand shock to give myself 10 more of those. Cool. Back to the billiards room. So yeah, the reason that this does any sort of damage is because I have that, uh, I have, uh, this skill that makes my smack damages, my smack attacks do, uh, cold damage, because that's my thing. Ooh. Okay, here's a new one. That's good. I wanted one of those. You mill around in the haunted billiard room for a while, idly rolling balls into the pockets of one of the tables, and listening to them thunk their way out of the ball return. I'm looking up at the rows of snarling taxidermy heads that line the walls. Man. Why would anyone want to look at all those angry looking heads staring at them while they play pool? What could be less relaxing than that? Suddenly there's a flash of lightning outside the window and the room, the entire house is plunged into darkness. After a moment, the lightning flashes again, briefly illuminating the stuffed heads, all of which appear to be looking right at you as a grandfather clock somewhere tolls out 13 o'clock. So sure, there's an answer to that question for you. We're gonna search for a light. You seem to remember that there was a short candelabra on the shelf next to the spare cubes of pool chalk. I managed to locate it with a minimum of flailing and knocking pool cubes out of the rack. After lighting the candles and putting back the cubes, you're left looking at the mounted animal heads in the flickering candlelight, which makes them look even more angry and alive than they did before. Terrific. What the heck, let's explore a bit. You set the candelabra on the edge of one of the pool tables, turning it so that the wax won't drip on the felt. You may be a psycho psychotic kleptomaniac, but you aren't a heathen. And you look around the room. Usually, you're true distracted by poltergeists and so on, so you pay much attention to the place, but it's weirdly quiet in here now. Almost too quiet. Nah, I'm just messing with you. What does too quiet mean, anyway? It's when things get loud that you got problems. You got a point there, whoever writes this game. Um, this game actually has multiple writers and coders. Uh, they're all based in Arizona, which is why... A lot of people think that it updates at weird times because it's it's for midnight time but only in Arizona I believe but anyway uh, let's search that cupboard over there the contents of the cupboard are surprising mundane a box of spare billiard balls pool chalk and q-tips a couple of tips of uh, decks of cards and some poker chips ping pong paddles and balls it's hard to imagine anything less frightening than a game at ping pong there's also some board games 
You notice the Scrabble tiles are almost entirely oozed with a few scattered bees. The white king in the chest set has a little string hanging man's noose around it. And the clue set has twice the number of map as usual. And as well as some extra cards like the Vengeful Ghost of Great Uncle Mauve. So that's a little more like what you were expecting. As you put in the games back in the cupboard, lights and house flicker and come back on. Guess it's time to get back to business, whatever that might be. Welcome to our Ool table. The ghostly pool shark has rematerialized next to one of the tables and grins at you smugly as he screws his custom ghost pool cue and chalks the tip of it with an actual cube of chalk. Uh, it's this guy. We're going to practice. Oh, we got two. Nice. Um. So, yeah, we did a... We certainly did it. Okay, let's try to hustle him because we've got a 10 skill now. Yeah. You lean over the table, cue in hand, and aim for the break. With a good solid crack, the balls skitter around the table like panic rats. Two of them escaped in their hole. You knock in a third and fourth, but you can't get a good shot at the, de at the fifth. So you satisfy yourself with parking the cue somewhere inconvenient for your opponent. The ghost grimaces, then tries to cover with a carefree shrug. He just barely manages to make a shot, but it's a close call. And the relief on his face makes it plain that you've already thrown him off the stride. He sinks three more, and then misses. With the table now open up nicely, open up nicely. your next three balls stuck in the pockets with a rhythm of precision clockwork, and you gild the lily by unnecessary banking the cue off of three rails before sinking the eight and winning the game. With a howl of frustration, the ghost attempts to break his pool cue over his knee. When they just pass through each other, he becomes even more frustrated, and manages to find something he can really lose his cool without anyone seeing it. You pick up the brass key he left behind with a smug grin of your own. All right, time to re-equip all my actual stat gear. Doo -doo. Okay, I just wanted to check that I'm still recording. Just so everyone sees that I'm cool, and that I guessed that it was going to be at 5. What's Chalky Hand do? I never fumble, and it gives me more weapon damage. Cool. Equipmante. Okay. So I got my pail on my head. Get my corn holder. Get my five ball, I think. So the four ball is sleaze damage, and the five ball is hot damage. Okay, cool. That's what I wanted. I don't like sleaze damage. Maybe it's because every single instance of sleaze damage is gross. Oh, I got loafers. Haha, <laughs> get it? Oh, they're made out of bread. It gives me more combat initiative. Um... How many can I get? Oh, whoa. You can get a lot of accessories on. Three at a time. That's more than I would expect. Wow, I'm an idiot. I've been leaving my accessories off because I thought you could only have one. So, yeah. We're going to head back to Spooky Raven. Spooky Raven Manor. We got the haunted library key, I think. Yeah, take a look, it's in a book. As you're walking through the Spooky Raven Library, you notice a shelf full of particularly interesting books. Which one would you like to peruse? Hmm. Let's read the dictionary. You start reading the dictionary, but you only get up to Abacus before you get bored and decide to take it with you instead. Ooh, what does that do? It's a combat item. Most enemies don't care about it. <laughs> cool. You're fighting a writing desk. In a library, you come across one of Lord Spooky Raven's writing desks. How did Lord Spooky Raven like his writing desk? He liked it just fine. Thanks for asking. Some of the ancient forbidden evil that he studied must have rubbed off on this desk, though. Because it's moving, growling, and trying to bite you in a way that ordinary writing desks hardly ever do. But you get the jump on it bonk holy shit we did 46 plus 8 plus 5 plus 2 damage we got a new record you open the drawers in the now still desk but you don't find any necklaces adventure again you're fighting a book bat if a brick bat is a small fragment of brick does that mean that this is a small fragment of a book nope not at all in fact it's a book that's possessed by some restless spirit and it's not flying around the library attacking anyone who happens by you happen by. I get to the jump on you. <laughs> it 
It barrels towards you, but he quickly produced a copy of the New Yorker from a nearby shelf and showed a scathing review of itself. It flutters away, muttering about how liberals wouldn't know good literature if it smacked them in the face. Fumble. You in the fight. You got a tattered scrap of paper. You know that this is a rectangular scrap of yellow paper. You know that smell that old books have that reminds you of a library? This has that, except it reminds you of an evil library. Let's you escape from combat without spending an adventure. That's kind of useful. Take a look. It's in a book. Ooh, nice. You read the book of ancient, forbidden, unspeakable yoga and try to fear the positions. They provide a surprisingly good workout, but a few of them put your head in places man was not meant to see. You gain 29 strongness. Hell yeah. You lose some hit points for spook damage. Another book, Bat. Bonk it. Hell yeah. You're fighting a Banshee Librarian. This is a Banshee employed by the ghost of Spooky Raven Manor to act as a librarian. She's really frustrated because if the one thing Banshees love to do, it's whale. And if there's one thing you can't do in a library, it's also whale. Let's try the dictionary on her. You begin to read from the dictionary. Your opponent is nonplussed. She picks up one of those things that used to stamp the dates on books and stamps you in the nipple with it. Ow, ooh, ooh, ow. You lose 13 hit points. Smack her. Smack her with a corn holder. Dealing a whole bunch of damage. Another book bat. Another tattered scrap of paper. Okay. Let me see here. I've got some meat, but uh, I don't really have too, too much. You know, I'm actually going to pause the recording right now. Uh, I'll come back when something interesting happens in Spooky Raven Manor's library. Hey, everyone, I'm back. Oops. Clicked into the window again after starting OBS, and I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, I grind up some meat. I did some extra grinding as well, uh, so I'm here to get some more stuff. I'm going to get Buoyancy the Beluga. I don't know what it does, but I love it, and it appears to be a passive. Can't keep a good Beluga down. In fact, can't keep a bad Beluga down, because the Buoyancy of Beluga is unrelated to its strength of character. Ooh, nice. So now we regenerate more health. That means that we can be much, much more dangerous. Bonker. Book bat. Dang. I dropped my corn holder on my bung. Cook up some pain for your opponent. 21 plus 8 plus 2 damage to be exact. Bonk, whack, boof, zap, sucko, you win the fight. So our ability to regenerate is actually pretty impressive. Let's read Better Homes and Conservative... The Better Haunted Homes and Conservatories Cookbook. Flip to the cookbook. Interesting. If you cook skewer with knob mushroom, you get knob skew ke sco shroom kebab. Found a new recipe. Nice. Lunch smack it. Actually, let's go let's go back and let's buy another skill, because I've got the cash for it. I've got the meat. I wanted to look at this, but I don't think I actually need anything. Alright. <laughs> let's get Thirst of the Weasel, because that sounds fun. And also, again, I just love having passive skills on me. Weasels aren't native to the frigid Northland, so ones who manage to survive there have done so by being vicious, bloodthirsty little killers. And giving what jerks normal weasels are, that's really saying something. <laughs> Your smacks restore 1 to 2 HP per gallon of fury. So now we're healing even more. That's dope. That's real dope. And I don't think I can get any more else. Because I, I haven't dive, dove, rather. I haven't looked at the crafting at all. So I don't really feel the need to get the new meat smithing one. Um, thrust smack would be another smack skill. And then scowl the awk. It's a non-combat skill that gives me scowl the awk. I don't know what that does. I definitely know that I want to get hide of the walrus because A, it's a passive skill and two it will defend me more it gives me 50 percent no just 50 more damage absorption okay cool 
Furious Wallop is... It costs one gallon of fury, but it's guaranteed to be a crit. That's really useful, actually. We happen by. Inkwell. You open one of the drawers of the desk and find what you've been looking for. A moderately expensive necklace with a card attached reading from my luscious Rebecca. Hmm. You're pretty sure Lady Spooky Raven's name was not Rebecca. But we got her necklace. Fighting a book bat. Damn. Tries to hit you with its spine, but you've got your orange crush. I mean, you dodge it. I'm just grinding. The snifter of a thoroughly aged brandy. Ooh. Let's go take a look at the inkwell as well. I, uh... Yeah, okay. Small bottle filled with black ink. Remember, if you don't want to ink poorly, you'll need an ink well. And now we have the Spooky Raven. This is Luscious Rebecca, or Lady Spooky Raven's necklace. You know, the one her faithful husband who totally loved her and her all and uh, her all alone got her as a gift before they all died. And it's a quest item. Cool. It's decent booze. This is a snifter of the brandy that Lord Spooky Raven likes. Looks like it got left in his desk drawer for decades. It's dried into a sort of thick brown sludge. Still smells like brandy, though. Why not? Turn the snifter up and upside down and wait for about 15 minutes into the coagulated brandy syrup to start pouring out of it. And then you drink it. Get a whole bunch of mysteriousness, five adventures, and two drunkenness. Cool. Love that. I want to get... um, I want to get one more encounter with the the book thing not you and I know I'm burning my adventures to do so but I've got a bunch of them here we go so I imagine that this will ooh, ancient forbidden and cool evil a love story which particular flavor of ancient forbidden and cool evil were you looking for Tuesdays with the porn fiends Apparently, the author of this book used to spend his Tuesday afternoons talking to retired nether fiends. Turns out he was onto something. If you want to know forbidden secrets of the dark and sinister nature of the universe, those guys are the guys you want to talk to. You get a whole bunch of mysticality. Nice. I want to get another one. Come on. I want to get another one. Come on. Just another one. And that'll be my last one, and then I can go on with my life. I want to read the book again. I want to read that same book. Like the sunglasses, but less comfortable. You're keeping a watchful eye out for book bats and banshees and such that you nearly collide with a perfectly normal-looking, scholarly-looking fellow. Perfectly normal-looking, that is, until he looks up from his book, you see his eyeballs are completely black. You scream, quietly, it's the library after all, and you issue a weapon, but he holds up a hand calmly. Don't be alarmed by my appearance, young adventurer. What's wrong with your eyes, man? You look like that guy in that band. Well, it was difficult to get any research done with all the ghosts and horrible things frightening the bejeebers out of me. Fortunately, I found this bottle of special eye drops. Keep me from seeing anything frightening so I can concentrate on my work. Try them for yourself. You can see the bottle. We got black eye drops. Intriguing. I wonder what it does. I'll read it, but in a bit. Yeah, I'm now regenerating so much that these things can't really hurt me. Ooh, okay. They didn't have the same one, but I'll just do this again. So yeah, we got a bunch of fortitude. Muscles are rather important to me, so. Take the access to Lady Spooky Raven in Spooky Raven Manor. There she is. Just going back and forth. Look at her. Look at her go. Hell yeah. All right. Lady Spooky Raven must have sensed somehow that you found her necklace because she seems to have materialized in the hallway. You approach her. At the sight of it, her eyes light up with an even more unearthly glow that they had prior to lighting up takes the necklace and places it around her neck, at which point a ghostly copy, a copy of the necklace silently falls to the floor. That is not at all how I expected that to work. You looked back just in time to see her drift upwards to the ceiling. I guess you don't even get a thanks. So yeah, that's everything. You're fighting a fiendish can of asparagus. In the haunted pantry, you're attacked by a fiendish can of asparagus. Cans of asparagus aren't normally that scary, but this one's got a knife. Jump him. Swat them on the knee. Wow, these are flame-broiled meat blob. 
You're ambushed by a giant flame broiled meat blob. It bobs up and down menacingly, dripping with meaty goodness and radiating weaves of intense heat. Yeah, they're not a possessed can of tomatoes. You encounter this abomination. You assume a fighting stance and prepare to match your opponent with a can of whoop ass. Damn. It starts to attack again, but instead you try, decide to try psychology. Hey, you say, are you a tomato or a tomato? The can stops confused and decides to call the whole attacking you thing off. And it fumbles. All right, there we go. Jeez, that was undead elbow macaroni. Inside the undead uh, haunted pantry, you encounter an undead elbow macaroni of unusual size. It rubs its hands together and prepares to assault you like a peanut. Oh, like a salted nut. <laughs> New damage record. Hell yeah. Smack it. A razor sharp can lid and a tomato. Nice. Probably make a Bloody Mary with that. Whoa! 54 plus 8 plus 5 plus 2 damage. Was that 69 damage? Hold on, I can't do math. Yeah, it was 69 damage. Nice. Hell yeah. Let's find... By the way, these people have their own podcast. Please listen to them. They're much better than me. Um, And then they have a radio show that is a fan. It's so cool that that's a thing uh pum, pum, pum. i want to find my stuff oh wait it's probably in here malamute biasher all right does it show our damage record in here Oh, well. Ghost of a Necklace. Thinking back on the life this necklace lives, leaves you simultaneously uncomfortable and glad you weren't involved in most of it. Resistance to elemental and eight sleaze damage. That's not bad. Okay. So let's take a look. What's this doing for me? Two stench damage. That's not amazing. Regen. I don't really need it because it's not really doing a whole lot for me. And loafers. More initiative. So I'm absolutely going to put this on. Now that I'm actually using MP, I might totally need that. So let's take this off. And this off. Because my own stuff's regenerating. Now I have more MP and my stats are bigger over here. And then with this, I do sleaze damage. So now I'm doing eight more sleaze damage, eight more hot damage. Let's take off the five ball. And let's put on the four ball, I think. Yeah, now it does 16 more sleaze damage. Cool. If I had a spell that did sleaze damage, I'd be set because look at this. Plus six spell damage, more sleaze damage, to, more damage to sleaze spells. Sleaze. I imagine that normally it'd be spooky, but it's sleaze because it was uh, a a adulterous relationship. And then that's the rest of my tent. I've got some adventures to burn. So yeah, I may as well, right? Get my 10 MP back. And then I'm just going to go hit someone. Fighting a rushing bomb. Bonk. Whoa! 16, that is real nice to see. I'll tell you that much. Just 16 more damage. Just ads. That's so cool. Now what the hell is a bum cheek? It's a hat. This is the si severed cheek of the bum that rushed you. Sizable enough cheek could be worn as a hat. It gives you a resistance to stench. I imagine it would. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Council of Loathing. We finally, finally going there. Hey, it's a new adventurer. Welcome, welcome. Boy, we can sure use people like you right now. We're our manners. We're the Council of Loathing. And you are? Dusky Alfred. That's a hero's name if ever we heard one. Gonna have plenty of work for you, but first you should spend a little time getting your bearings. You look underpowered, so you can maybe head off to one of the less dangerous parts. So now they're like, hey, this is... Go do, go do the main quest. Uh, and I forgot that they did that. 
We require your aid, adventurer. We need a mosquito larva. Don't ask why, because we won't tell you. In any case, the best place to find a mosquito larva is in the spooky forest, found in the distant woods. Mark on your map for you. Council requires another task for you, adventurer. You must slay the boss bat, found in the deepest part of the bat hole in the nearby plains. Slam, turn to us to prove your conquest. We've gotten word, adventurers, that the knob goblins, who normally keep themselves at Cobb's Knob, are planning a major military action set at the Gen Seaside Town. Need for you to go deep inside the knob and nip this problem in the bud, so to speak, by neutralizing the Goblin King. Spies determined that there's a secret entrance that'll allow you inside the knob. Cover this map and no one knows how to read it. You'll need to figure out how to decrypt the symbols on it if you're going to find that entrance. And be careful with it, adventure. Many Bothans died to... Oh, wait, never mind. That was something else. Deep fat fires in the distant woods are having problems. One of the experiments has gone awry and fey creatures have invaded the grove. Please, adventure. Lend them your assistance. So, first, we may as well just knock this out because we've already spoken to him. Oh, dear. Did I... Okay, cool. It's gone now. Yeah, um, I kind of did a dumb because I uh, totally forgot what the actual purpose of them is. To just hand you quests. Oh, there we go. Whoa, this is already unlocked. Isn't this where the final boss lives? I can't go here, but I can look at it. All right, anyway. Now I can finally, finally use that... Thing, right? What does this do? Never mind. Alright. What does this do? Oh, right. Disintegrating quill pen. This quill pen looks like it's seen better days. Maybe it just came from a really crappy bird. Either way, if you got something right with this, it should be something sort. You dip, the, you pick up the pen and it dips itself into your ink well, completely draining it. Filled to capacity, floats through a tattered scrap of paper in your sack, making strong arcane symbols. Exhausted pen falls to the floor, while it disintegrates into dust. Well, dust covered with ink. More like mud than dust, I guess. Oh, so it burns my ink wells and uh, paper. Okay. Yeah, use them all. I want those things out of my inventory anyway, right? Knob Goblin Encryption Key. Cobb's Knob Map. With the map in one hand and the encryption key in the other, you do two things. First, that you decode the map and figure out the back entrance to Cobb Knob. Second is that you find yourself wishing that you had a third hand so you can enjoy a tasty glass of ice cold lemonade while you're doing the first thing. Reading maps is hard work. Memorize the location at the door and then eat both the map and the encryption key. For no particular reason, really. It just seemed like a cool spy thing to do. Hell yeah, dude. Black Eye Drops. This one gives you a massive spooky resistance. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, and then map to a hidden booze cache. Do I use this? Overgrown lot in the wrong side of the tracks. I would have thought that this is just, didn't I go here? Anyway, now I can go to the nearby plains and then go inside Cobb's Knob. The outskirts of cops now. Fighting in the subsistent. This guy. Let's serve our sentence this time. Oh, we got muscle bound in this. Nice. You decide to take it like a man or a woman. We're not making any value judgments here and serve your sentence. This aged well for like. When this game come out? Like 2011? Luckily, it turns out your sentence is only a couple of hours. Get a good workout from all the sewage holding. Even your fingers get stronger due to the vigor for which the jaw requires you to hold your nose. Actually, let's do this one first. Distant woods. Spooky forest, smoke signals, drip institute, corpse of the deep fat fires, and the forest village, and a yelling guy. Holy shit. All right. Deep in the darker, denser, junglier parts of the distant woods, you encounter a man dressed in the typical khaki plus fedora garb of the professional archaeologist. He turns as you approach and gestures you for you to come closer. Hey there, he says with a firm handshake. Dr. Henry Fanning, PhD. Call me Dakota. Okay, if that's what you want, you reply. You're an archaeologist, I presume? That's right, kid. I'm on the brink of a major discovery. You look around, but you don't see anything of any obvious archaeological interest. Just a sheer stone cliff covered with vines and moss. Uh, I suppose it's a nice cliff as cliffs go, but uh, look up, kid, Dakota sighs. Take a couple of steps back and crane your neck to see the top of the cliff. See, the cliff is actually the base of an ancient stone building, possibly some kind of temple. The stone steps are the bottom, but they end abruptly at the cliff edge. 
Dakota and Nazi look back at him. Yeah, I figure the steps were lost during a combination of erosion, earthquakes, and later civilization quarrying the stones. Later civilizations are always greedy bastards. Listen, I need a hand getting up there. I'm a decent climber, but the wall's too sheer to monkey up it. What do you expect me to do, right? I, mean, I could give you a boost, but you're an adventurer, right? So your job is basically to run errands for people? Excuse me, but we call them quests, you reply huffily, crossing your arms. Sure, right. So I've got a quest for you. See the vines growing on the rock? I could climb up with those if they need strengthening. So I need you to pick a couple things for me. All right. I suppose. What do you need? First, I need a bendy soda straw. I think there's a sort of demon, a fallen arch fiend that carries them. What does a demon want with a bendy straw, you ask? Look, kid, ask one yourself. I'm not a demonologist. I also need of some very powerful high-octane plant food. The sort of stuff they use in magical greenhouses and conservatories. Okay, you say? Think I know a conservatory that might have some of those? Last thing I need a sewing seed. Sewing needle. Sewing needle, all right. Where did I find one of those? Good grief, do I have to tell you everything? You're the adventure kid, go adventure one up. Sewing kit or something would probably be pretty standard gear for you guys, I think. You're probably selling in vending machines. I'll wait here until you get back. Let's knock this out. You're fighting a warwolf. You're attacked by a warwolf. A warwolf? A warwolf? You can't un pronounce it, but you can certainly lay the smack down upon it proper. Uh, this guy is a reference to the MST3K episode Werewolf, set in Arizona as well. You're fighting a bar. You're attacked by a bar. Yep, I reckon there's a lot of bar in these words. Boy, howdy. Holy moly. 86 damage. We got bar skin. This is a pellet from a big old bar. Yep, I reckon it is. Nice. You're fighting a triffid. In the midst and mist of the ambling of the spooky forest, you encounter a triffid, a horrifying ambulatory plant. You'll probably need an ambulance after it's done ambulating all over you. So jump on it. We do a bunch of damage because we came here way later than we were supposed to because I forgot. Fighting a spooky mummy. You're tied by one of the spookiest mummies you've ever seen. This isn't saying much though, since you never found mummies to be particularly spooky. I mean, oh no, I'll have to try to walk slightly faster if I want to escape. Jump him. We got ancient pills. The pills that time forgot. What could go wrong if you swallow them? They restore 40 MP. Fight in a bar. War wolf. Fight a wolf man. Deeper than the spooky forest, you're attacked by the wolf man. Perhaps you can defeat him by kicking him in the nards. That's right. Wolf man's not got nards. Jump him. Uh, I'm going to pause the recording since I appear to just be fighting a bunch of stuff. I'll come back when I have something, though. Hey, I'm back. It was shorter than I expected. <clears throat> Arboreal respite. You managed to get quite a ways into the forest without running into any of those spooky monsters. With a sigh of relief, you pause to catch your breath and look around, trying to figure out what to do with this newfound freedom. Your interest is piqued when you notice an old, overgrown road leading off into the woods. Your soul is soothed when you hear the bubbling of a stream from somewhere nearby. And your sense of foreboding begins to tingle as you notice a dark thicket of hills on a nearby tree side. It's not the darkest thicket of hills that you've ever seen. One of the darker. Which way will we go? Maybe you ought to look for that mosquito larva the council wants. You think back to everything you know about mosquitoes. They're annoying, they spread disease, and they lags in water. Well, I'll go through the stream, even though I don't know if it actually has enough. Like, motion. Like, it might have too much motion. It has to be stagnant water for mosquitoes. Follow your ears to the bubbling stream. Dip your feet in the cool water and survey your surroundings. Downstream from where you're heading, the area opens into a marshy expanse. You're normally pretty mellow about marshal marshes, but something about this one seems sort of harsh. Upstream, you spot a dark opening leading to the bank of the swamp, to the stream. It looks like it's just big enough for you to squeeze into, if you're in the mood to squeeze into something right now. Yeah, you enter the marsh and almost immediately plunge ankle deep into a puddle of filthy, stagnant water. Hell yeah. Grumbling, you extricate yourself from the mud and notice your ministrations have started up a disgusting, wriggling mass of mosquito larvae. Actually, one of them isn't disgusting at all. Sort of key, so you take it with you. Cool. All right. I, yeah. Oh, cool. We can do it again. Let's follow the stream. Squeeze into the cave. You wriggle into the cave, and just past the entrance, you find the body of the famed explorer Chester Meatpot. After carefully checking, checking for... Booby, booty traps you rifle through his wallet looks like they called him meat pot for a reason you know other than a reason that it was also his name 
In addition to the meat, you find a tra uh, strange coin. Tree hold coin. Interesting. Tree hold coin. This is a strange, irregularly shaped coin with three tree-shaped holes cut out of it. It's either part of some elaborate puzzle or the work of some very, very strange vandal. Let's head back to a uh, council loathing. Thanks for the larva adventure. Actually, you know what? You look pretty lonely. Maybe you should hatch this larva and keep the mosquito as a pet. You'll need a familiar grow terrarium at your campsite. Buy one with this meat if you don't already have one. We've received word that the owner of the typical tavern in the distant woods is having a rat problem. We'd reward you if you took care of it for him. We're sick of these disasters. Holes in the sky, tentacle beasts trying to eat our town. We're trying to do something about this. Just you wait. Um, I don't know if I have one of those, so let's take a look at where the hell that would even be. Market Square. Oh, Mr. Store is the online thing, by the way. Let me see here. General Store? Familiar Grow Terrarium. Here we go. This is the roomy and affordable Familiar Grow Terrarium. Turn your home or campsite into a breeding ground for all manner of helpful creatures. Soda water. Hermit permit. Dingy planks. Dramatic ranch. It's a range or ram for your home, where the deer and the antelope will soon be a delicious meal. Seriously, though, with this in your kitchen, you'll be cooking up fancy meals with ease and panache and other spices you've never heard of. This is a kit from France which contains everything you need to make cocktails using fancy ingredients. I'll get those later. See if there's anything else. Never mind. I'm a fool. All right. You use it from your inventory. Here we go. You set it up at your campsite. You don't have a familiar. It contains no familiars. Okay. Maybe I... Lord, it's been a while, though. Okay, I didn't think so. Consumables? It doesn't look like it. Here we go. You put the mosquito larva in your familiar grow terrarium. It hatches into a beautiful baby mosquito. You name him Desmond. From pest to helper, this sucker's a sucker for a good meal. This blood's for you, man. Damages your enemies and restores your HP. So this one also heals us. So. We're pretty much kicking ass, right? Trees. Yeah, Desmond sucks a bunch of blood out and injects it into you. You gain eight hit points. Um, let's go to the deep fat fires. Talk to them. Please, adventurer, help us. We are performing a ritual at our infernal gate, and Brother Starfish dropped the butter knife. All oh, the infernal creatures escaped our grasp and have tainted our grove. Please collect the taint. Collect the three items necessary to perform the ritual, which will banish these fiends to their own realm. The first item can probably be found in the dark neck of the woods. The second one is last seen in the dark heart. The third item was sold near the dark elbow. <coughs> I joked on my own saliva. It's recommended that you have at least 45 muscle to adventure here. Oh boy. Whatever. You're fighting a Hellion. This is a charged atom of Infernium. It's larger than you might think and deadlier. He hits you with a rogue electron. Isn't it ionic, don't you think? You lose 27 hit points. That isn't so bad, actually. Bam. Ooh, you lunge towards your opponent and smack him with the corn holder, dealing 15 plus 5 plus 32 damage. I guess it's because he's weak to sleaze. I would have thought that he would have been weak to cold, but maybe it's not that. Desmond heals us for four. He draws you into his outer valence and batters you with his electrons. The hair on your neck stands on edge, then bursts into flames. Critical hit. Oh, boy. You lunge towards your opponent and smack him with a corn holder, dealing a shitload of damage. You watch as, with glee as Desmond extracts four blood from your enemy. 
Then you listen with barely concealed horror as he squirts the blood into your ear. You win the fight. Jeez. That was an actual challenge. I'm not displeased with that. Hellion Cube. In the same way that Bouillon Cube is a potent combination of salt and bull, this is a potent combination of salt and hell. Two to three physical damage. That's garbage. Scroll of Ancient Unspeakable Evil. Dangerous and unpredictable magic. Well, I'm glad I burned all my stuff and turned it into that, right? Combat items. Two to four physical damage. That isn't great either. Here, I'll burn one of these. Okay. Let's keep it going. Actually, I want to be able to I want to be able to. Uh, I want to be able to crit with the furious wallop. I feel like that'll definitely help me. Uh, I'm gonna sell a bunch of stuff. Sell stuff. Okay. I'm gonna save all my food. Um, I'll use these. I don't want this. Oops. I don't want this. I don't want this. Yeah, it's not really useful for me. I want to save my seal skull helmet. The chef's hat regenerates MP, which actually isn't too, too bad. And the bugbear beanie is used for the bugbear costume. So is this thing. Oh, the spooky stick's actually a, a weapon. It's two-handed. Eh, never mind. Yeah, this thing's 5 to 10, and it's two-handed, so these aren't really good. And I don't really want the sewer snake either. It's okay, but it... Whatever. I don't need the damage reduction. I don't want the dirty hobo gloves anymore. This item's unique, so I think I'll save this. And then I'll burn all these, I'll burn all these. Those. Oh, man, these don't sell for very good. Because their components sell for much more. Let's sell them all. 461 meat. Dope. Hmm. Well, I'll be fine for a little bit. Actually, I'm going to go grind some more meat. Where should I even go to do that? Um, the grassy knoll? No. Actually, I know what we're going to do. I'm going to read some old tombstones. You browse the old tombstones. The spelling on them seems normal. They must predate whatever happened here that messed things up. Here lies H.R. May, executed for perjury. Here lies Ursula Shy Albatos Bray, outspoken father. Torn apart by a hulking duck. Here lies Roy Irwin. Missing, presumed enthusiastic. Here lies Luther Hampton. Lost a duel versus a paddle tester. <laughs> Emma Schultz in ambivalent memory. Meriwether gluttonous ferret Soto. Disruptive cousin. Boiled alive by a silly snowboarder. Let me see here. Yeah. Fighting a Zamobi. You briefly wonder what's in his head, in his head, but you forget about that when he lunges at you. Attack him. Whole bunch of damage, got some loose teeth. You're fighting a Gual. This is a Gual. Gwals eat dead people. They're hugely unpopular at fondue parties, kissing booths, potlucks, and just about everywhere else. He breathes his rotten, carrion-laden breath into your face, but you offer him a mint. Cook us some pain for your opponent. Bunch of damage worth. Desmond gains a pound. Nice. A grave mistake. Aha, found it. Big great tombstone reading Here Rise Fernsworthy. Let's hope he stays there. Now to dig up the body and get out of here. Except grave digging is kind of difficult without a shovel. We got a shovel? No? Hmm. Are you kidding me? I need a shovel? Can I buy one? General store. <laughs> No. Okay. 
I don't know why I would be there, but I checked. Damn it. Oh. Okay. Pete Smith. Do you sell shovels, dog? Reasonably sized fountain. Armory and legacy. Every time. <sighs> All right. I'll be right back. Everyone. Actually, you know what? This is a pretty good long episode. I feel pretty good about it. Um, that's Kingdom of Loathing, everyone. I've been Alfred. Thanks for coming by. Have a nice day. Uh, next time, we're going to go get the thing from the graveyard and then we can go back to the deep fat fires all right i suppose i should open the thing so i can stop my recording all right now just imagine that i said goodbye to everyone all right bye <laughs>